I cannot express too much just how easy it is most weeks to watch SmackDown. Like, sure, it's got a big advantage over Raw in the fact that it's only two hours. It's not running up against Monday Night Football, all of this and all that. But, my goodness, like, even with some of the lulls in the show, even with some of the low points in the show, it's just such an easy watch by comparison. It's crazy to me. Um, and so much of that, admittedly, has to do with our tribal chief and the constant shenanigans of Jey Uso. Now, Jey Uso comes out to start the show, and for some reason he's all types of pumped up and excited. Like he did something big on Sunday at Survivor Series. Like he played some integral role in Roman Reigns' victory. And, and that's just not the case. And, and we know this. And when Roman came out to address this, you know, he made sure he let him know. He did not need his help. He did not want his help. And he did not ask his help. So he does not appreciate the help that he got. Because he didn't need it. And he clearly didn't need it. But what it doesn't change is the fact that Jay's team still got stomped and swept at Survivor Series. Team SmackDown got swept. Now, I still think you could have done all of the exact same things that you did here if you would have had Jay at least eliminate a couple of people on Sunday. That was the right call. You could have Braun and Keith Lee be the, the final survivors. That's fine. Like, give Jay a little bit of something. In some ways, I could make it even more intriguing. Like, Roma could say, you started the job, but you didn't finish it. You know, as the tribal chief, I can't have that. I can't half-ass it. I got to go all the way in the ring, and I got to go all the way in the bedroom. And imagine if he ever said that, what the ladies of wrestling Twitter would do. They would faint, and frankly, some of the guys. And who could blame them? Um, but our tribal chief also made sure that it was very clear that he pointed out that he's not a bitch looking for Thanksgiving leftovers. He's not backstage looking for Thanksgiving leftovers. Makes you think. The fact that he brought it up more than once makes you think that somebody was back there <laughs> looking for Thanksgiving leftovers. But even Roman knows his role. While he's the tribal chief and it's his island and everything else, he knows that JTG is the one true king of catering, and that can never, ever, ever be supplanted. Period. So, of course, he got into Jay's shit here a little bit, as he absolutely should have. And as Jay was going to the back, out comes Otis, and Otis is celebrating. And frankly, why is Otis celebrating? He got eliminated Sunday at Survivor Series. He didn't do anything. So as far as I'm concerned, the good clean shots that Jay got on him were frankly justified. Like this is about teaching and extending the teachings. It's like Roman Reigns is the tribal chief, is the tree. Jay Uso is one of the branches and one of the leaves here is Otis and he's got to beat him into submission and make him understand that that's not okay. So for those of you who thought you were getting a match with Otis, <laughs> that ain't happened. But unfortunately, we followed this up with the Street Profits versus a team. What team, you ask? Robert Roode and <laughs> Dolph Ziggler. Like, why is he a thing? Why is Robert Roode saddled with this garbage? Why were the Street Profits talking about Robert Roode not having a beard when he clearly has a beard now? Like, did you write the promo for them beforehand without realizing that Robert Roode had a beard? Does nobody pay attention backstage? And why is Dolph Ziggler, excuse me, <laughs> Dolph Ziggler still a thing? And then the team won. So you know they're going to get a future tag shot against the, tag title shot against the Street Profits. Oh, just why? And yeah, Robert Roode got the pinfall and everything else. I feel really bad for Robert Roode because he got to get saddled with that piece of crap. He really, really does. And then speaking of bad things that put you in a bad mood, yeah, let's go ahead and run the final farewell into the ground, shall we? That's what I need. I need another reminder that Taker's done until the Saudis come with big money. It's all about leverage, folks. Yeah, let's just run this into the ground into oblivion, okay? Oh, God almighty. Um... I've got to say this, Daniel Bryan versus Sami Zayn. Like, this is ridiculous. For an Intercontinental Champion, the hostile work environment that Sami Zayn is continually, perpetually put through 
is just unbelievable. He's having to work immediately the day after a national holiday, which you're going to say, well, he's Canadian, so it doesn't matter. No, you know what? No. He, he's, he's trying to be accepting of all cultures and all beliefs, because that's what a great intercontinental champion does, while pointing out certain atrocities. Nothing wrong with that. But having to work, you know, knowing that he probably feasted on Thursday, having to come right back and wrestle somebody in the caliber of Daniel Bryan is crap. It's absolute crap. And then again, as is so often the case, Sami Zayn has to continuously worry about the integrity of the ring. Can the ring crew get their stuff together? Because how can this man even concentrate and focus when all throughout the match, he's worried about the integrity of the ring? Like, he's even having to build his matches and his attack and his fight style around it. Like, when he runs Daniel Bryan into the ring post, he's making sure that the ring posts are firm. This time, luckily enough, they were. And when he did the brain buster on the apron, you know, he was making sure the integrity of the ring was sound. And thankfully, this time, it was. But... One thing I want to call out here is that unlike Daniel Bryan, that no good yellow gutless coward, that even as they were going into the back, Sami Zayn still managed, still managed to run back down the ramp and into the ring to beat the 10 count. Where was Daniel Bryan? In short, some of you are going to say, well, he was getting beaten up by Jey Uso. Like, you're going to bring up all these falsities and fake news into the conversation. And as far as big E goes, like, why, why you got to sit there and do that to the man? Side note, I wish Big E did bring back the five count. That would be something cool, be something different. Certainly would help him stand out. But it feels kind of weird that they would send him towards the Intercontinental Champion. It felt like you were going for a big push with Big E. Are we backing off the big push, or are we making the Intercontinental Championship part of the big push, and that means that Big E might not be winning the Royal Rumble, and he might not be in a featured main event type match at WrestleMania. That's what I'm trying to figure out here. Uh, but be careful, Big E. Sammy is crafty. He's wily. He's the champion for a reason. Don't bite off more than you can chill. Uh, Bianca Belair took on Natalia. Poor Bianca Belair. She should be a big star. She absolutely should be. Until WWE inevitably undercuts her. Like, you get hopeful because you see initially how they're packaging her, they're presenting her, and you're like, okay, you know, maybe they actually get it and they understand she could be a big deal. Uh, but then they have her beat Natalia via roll-up. She should not be beating Natalia via roll-up. Natalia is nothing. She means nothing. She will do nothing. She has done nothing. Bianca Belair should be going over strong and dominant. Now, I am very much looking forward to the feud between her and Bailey that is starting and is to come, because that could be really, really good, and that could be good for, frankly, both of them. So I look forward to that. Uh, but please stop having Bianca Belair win via roll-up. I, I don't think that's too much to ask. Uh, and this stuff with Buddy Murphy and Baron Corbin, um, here, here's what I'm trying to understand. It's four-on-one, basically, against Baron Corbin, but we're supposed to be cool with the Mysterio family? But are we supposed to hate them? Are we supposed to cheer for Baron Corbin? I well, I don't know what the hell this was. Like, what was this supposed to be? Like, maybe you say, well, you just hate Baron Corbin that much, so it's all right that you went four-on-one. Eh, maybe. You probably could have done without this match. Maybe. Maybe a week or two without the Mysterios would be just fine. You know, but maybe there's a thing of you have a trade-off here. You have these guys being featured, Buddy Murphy being featured, means that Lars Sullivan is nowhere to be found. And if that's the case, you know what? I will tolerate this. Because paging Lars Sullivan, it seemed like you were getting a rocket ship push, and then Vince apparently has lost interest. Like, did he get hurt or something? Did something happen? Is there more film of him doing things that would potentially make the company look bad, make him look bad? I'm just trying to figure it out. Like, as this guy was getting pushed, and then all of a sudden we haven't seen him for weeks. It's crazy to me. Uh, then you have Sasha. This was actually well done. Carmella, you know, making her point backstage, sitting down. And when she snapped the fingers once, nothing happened. When she snapped the fingers twice, here comes a hand in to present her a drink. And the fingers are turned, and it's boss. And you realize then and it's Sasha Banks. Um, that was actually well done. And, and my thing is, is for this, if nothing else, 
I, I don't get why we're supposed to make a big deal about Carmelo. If you're just doing this for something to shock Sasha Banks to do, somebody for Sasha Banks to go over, then that makes sense, that works, and that's cool. And you would assume, you would think, that that's ultimately going to be the result of all of this. You would think. You would think. Ugh. Well, then we get to the main event. It's Jey Uso versus Kevin Owens, because early on in the night, that fat face wants to sit there and come in there all porky pig style <laughs> and stick his snout in business where it doesn't belong. He tried to stick his nose in the Samoan family business, and you just don't do that. Like, why can't people just leave well enough alone? Why can't they just sit there and mind their own damn business? Hashtag white people. Just leave them alone. It doesn't concern you. Not everything requires your damn opinion. Is it affecting your life, KO? No. Then hell no, let it go. But he just can't do that. Even though he's Canadian, he comes here to America and he gets that American sense of Caucasian entitlement. I'll teach you that. And of course, you know, eventually it's only going to last but so long before it's going to result in chair shots because Jay's had enough of this. You know, he's got a lot of pressure right now, self-inflicted, because he continues to do things against the will of the tribal chief. And you shouldn't be that surprised. And then, of course, KO taking it way too extreme because he started this crap to begin with. And he sat there and stuck his nose in business where it doesn't belong. Now he's the one basically destroying Jey Uso and taunting the tribal chief Roman Reigns and trash talking him and saying that he's next up and he wants a piece of Roman. All right. And you saw Roman backstage with Paul Heyman as Paul Heyman was lustily looking at him. You know, Roman was standing up straight, looking straight ahead at the TV, like normal sane freaking people do. And Roman's going to absorb all of this. Like, you, you don't call out the tribal chief, KO. This entitlement thing only goes but so far. You, you, you're, you're lucky that Roman Reigns does things at his pace, his speed, and his convenience. And believe me, there will be hell to pay for this. For both Jey Uso for allowing this to happen and for Kevin Owens for disrespecting the family because the one thing you cannot have above all else, this goes back to Michael Corleone Godfather stuff. You don't disrespect the family, period. So, although it seemed like they were maybe pointing towards Roman and Daniel Bryan, they've called a bit of an audible here. And I will say, it probably is for the better. Like Roman versus KO at TLC, I can get behind. You know, this is a much more interesting version of a Kevin Owens and ultimately makes him a much more interesting version for Roman Reigns to beat the brakes off of. Yeah! Because that's what the tribal chief do. Uh, so this week's show, you know, the stuff, it's probably been this way for a lot of weeks, like the stuff involving Roman and Jay were the highlights of the show. There were some other lulls and some other down points in here. But it was still good. It just wasn't great. Um, but I can get down with Roman and KO. Just Owens better be careful. Be careful what you wish for. Because you just might get it. So anyways, you let me know what you think about this week's uh, SmackDown show in the comment section below. If it's your first time checking me out and you enjoyed any part of this at all, do it for the Tribal Chief. Smash that subscribe button. Click the bell so that way you're notified of future videos. What the hell? Why not? It's a fun thing to do. And make sure you check out the 30 Days of Taker video series on this channel. It's coming to a close, but lots of great content in there for the month of November. I will see you later. The Schlegetti signing out.